starting it. Okay. Hi, today I'm here with Ms. Jamie Gollinger. She is a physician's associate, um, and I would love to hear more about your role. Well, first of all, thank you for recognizing that our name got upgraded to physician associate because for uh, at forever and ever it was physician assistant. And I think that that kind of associated us with a, a negative, uh, you know, or mediocre connotation or something. I didn't think of it that way, but the industry did. So anyway, thank you for recognizing our new name. Um, yeah, my name's Jamie. I've been a physician assistant. I've been practicing since 2006, all in uh, Bentonville and Rogers area. I went to school at Missouri State, which I love. Go Bears. Um, if any of you are thinking about being a PA, you should 100% look at uh, Missouri State in Springfield because they have a wonderful undergraduate degree that can funnel you into their PA program, and it's a great PA program. Um, really sky's the limit because they have such a good relationship with Cox and St. John's up there and they are um, level one trauma centers. So they have a, <clears throat> a lot of access to some pretty fantastic care. But anyway, I um, became a physician assistant because I wanted to work in healthcare, but I didn't necessarily wanted to be a physician and be the um, sole one in charge. Um, I wanted to be more of a team aspect, if you will, working hand in hand with physicians. Um, my father is a physician and just over the years, I kind of saw the evolution of medicine where the um, physician used to, you know, the physician originally was in charge of the patient care, but as we know in America, uh, medicine has become a business. And so now it's more, it's more corporate where less of the control is in the hands of the physician and more so in the corporate entity. So I felt the physician assistant role would give me a really good way of still being able to get a lot of hands-on time with the patient, um, work with some pretty amazing physicians and learn lots of things, um, but not, not be able to have to lose um, so much control as far as the corporate part goes. So um, PA school, as you all know, is two years. Um, you know, everyone starts talking at the end of the first year, well, what do you want to specialize in? What do you want to be? Well, it's kind of like asking a little kid what they want to be when they grow up. Some know and some don't. And I didn't have a clue, but um, what I really wanted to specialize in, I really loved all my rotations. Um, but when my husband and I moved to Northwest Arkansas in 2006, um, there were two job opportunities, one in GI and liver and one in oncology. And I picked the one in GI and liver and I absolutely just loved it. The more I learned about it, the the more I loved it. And it's just, it's such a broad field going anywhere from the mouth all the way down to the colon. So many different disease processes, a wide age range of patients to take care of. I mean, I just absolutely loved it. Um, after about four years of GI, I love the field of GI, but I realized I was not very good at clinic. Um, clinic is, needs to be kind of a fast paced environment. And I was, I was just, I was fast in the hospital, but I just couldn't get it on the clinic side. So I decided to become a hospitalist. And I was lucky enough that the hospital's director at Mercy hired me in 2010. And that was my home for eight years. And it was wonderful. All I did was take care of people that had to come in the hospital that needed to be admitted to the hospital and help their families kind of understand, you know, trying to figure out what happened, how they get there and try and get them better and organize the team. You know, do they need cardiology, nephrology, neurology? dermatology, you know, orthopedics, like what did, what did they need? Um, infectious disease and whatnot. So I did that, um, full time for eight years and I was, um, I absolutely loved that role. Um, there's nothing better than bringing somebody in the hospital who doesn't feel good and their family's frustrated and sad and seeing them leave, leave happy and healthy. So that was a super rewarding job for me. Um, I had two, uh, baby boys in, in two years. So, um, I decided, you know, my husband traveled a lot in medicine. It's, um, it's really, it's really demanding. And I, I credit all those, uh, working PA NP and doctor moms out there still, um, in the hospital full time. Um, I just realized that I, that was not sustainable for my family. So I was looking for something, um, where, you know, if my husband were to be gone, it wouldn't be such an emergency if I had to take off or I was looking for something with more steady daytime hours, no nights, no weekends, no call, just because of his travel schedule. And um, in the middle of my hospitalist career, I developed a love for aesthetics. So a long time ago, I got trained in Botox and dermal fillers and um, 
so I kind of did that on the side while I was a hospitalist. And then when I was looking to find something else full time outside the hospital, I was lucky enough to find the amazing positions at Women's Health Associates who were opening up their own aesthetics wing. So that's primarily what I do now. I do um, Botox, dermal fillers, um, all the injectables, Sculptra, um, which is brought on the new cellulite injectable. And I also do Morpheus 8, which is kind of an aggressive ablative procedure for um, collagen production and skin tightening. And I also help um, oversee the estheticians because um, they do a great job and they do, they do some procedures too that I help oversee laser treatments and whatnot. So um, this has been very rewarding, definitely in, in a different realm, but very, very rewarding. Um, I pride myself working on our, our hardworking moms and um, working moms out there who still want to keep their skin healthy. And um, so I, I'm really, really enjoying this role. Definitely different, but very much so enjoying this role. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. You've had so many amazing roles over the years. So yeah. just in particular with this one, what do you think are kind of your favorite aspects of this specific role? I think it's something that's less known um, in the field of PA. So it's hundred um, percent. I would say um, my dermatology counterparts, you know, across the Northwest Arkansas area, I know a lot of them, they practice um, traditional dermatology and they do aesthetics. So credit to them for juggling um, all of that. Um, this role, I really enjoy because, you know, it becomes personal because when you're a mom and you're trying to work full time, I mean, there's just you feel like you have no time for yourself and you just feel like you're constantly tired and then you constantly look tired. And then you have people say to you, Oh, you look so tired. Is your baby sleeping? And you're like, yeah, thanks. Just being a mom, just tired. And so you just, you know, you get tired of being told you look tired. And so I like this role. And then sometimes traditionally, you know, med spas and aesthetic treatments, they one, um, they are very expensive, can be very expensive, have the stigma of being very expensive. So I think some people think that these treatments are out of reach for them, which my goal is to make it so that they're not. Um, I feel like everybody deserves to be able to take care of their skin and take care of it well. Um, and it can be really, it can be really overwhelming. You know, um, what's best for me? Is it Morpheus 8? Is it laser? Is it skin pen? Is it, you know, what skincare? Do I need Botox? Do I need fillers? Do I need Sculptra? Like it, there's so many options and the industry just keeps coming out with more and more and more. And so what the estheticians that I've done have just said, everybody's going to take a deep breath. We're going to calm down. You just, you assess the patient in front of you. What's their skin type? What are their needs? what's their time frame and what's their budget. And we do a really good job of telling them that this is, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Like you can do one treatment this month, one treatment the next month, we can alternate treatments and then just come up with what's really best for them and be most respectful of their time. So we've just, we've tried to take away that stigma of people aren't good enough, rich enough. You know, I shouldn't be here. I, I can't afford this to, yes, we can do this and it's all going to be okay. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it calmly and on a, on a good time frame. Yeah. That's wonderful. I think yeah. that's like, everyone needs to always, you know, look their best to feel their best. I think. Um, so I think the last thing really is just, do you have any tips for students who are aspiring to take on a similar role as you? I would say whatever you do, whether it's, you know, whatever path you go down in medicine, physical therapy, occupational therapy, PA, aesthetic PA, cardiovascular, whatever, make sure that you, one, you really want to take care of patients. I would say just as demanding as the world is becoming, as demanding as medicine has become, as dynamic and um, diverse, there's, there's so many different avenues. So you just, you really need to make sure that you're somebody who wants to take care of people. Cause if you're not somebody who wants to take care of people, do not go into medicine because it's incredibly demanding. That would be number one. Once you make that decision, um, make sure that you you focus on, I know anatomy and physiology isn't always the fun stuff, but you, you got to know that stuff down pat. That is how you take, if you can understand why the body is doing what it's doing, if you, if you know your anatomical structures, 
and your muscles and your layers and your ligaments and what their role is and what they do, then that will make you a much better clinician, no matter what you do. And I know it's not the most glitzy and it's not the most glamorous, but you, you really have to focus on those two courses to make sure that you do the best you can. Okay. Thank you so much for everything. I really yeah. love hearing about your different roles and how it's transformed. And I think it's, you know, just a great lesson. I think the one thing that I personally really like about PA is that you can switch easily, like rather than, you know, if you're going to medical school and you specialize in something, it's very, very difficult to be able to switch your career. And I think that's something that's really nice about, you know, PA schools that you can kind of switch your areas and your expertise pretty easily. hundred percent. That is to your point. I'm sad. I'm sorry. I didn't bring that up, but that is that is definitely a bonus of being a PA or nurse practitioner. You know, you, you, if you, like I said, you know, I went to GI to hospitalist to aesthetics and many of my friends have gone from urgent care, you know, family practice, dermatology, dermatology, you know, to other, other roles. So um, sky's the limit. And there's, there's, a, there's a shortage of providers in the United States overall, like regardless. So, you know, there's, there's lots of opportunity there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really enjoyed learning from you. Absolutely. Bye.